Glory, 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 and glory. <laughs> Praise God. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will swim in it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Master. Glory. Everyone say, as a man thinks, so he is. And all things work to the good. Very important. As a man thinks, so he is. So if you keep listening to the voice of the enemy, you're going to become exactly what he tells you to be. But we have the power to choose. Amen? So as a man thinks, so he is. That stinky thinking will destroy an individual. Listen, nobody's perfect. We make mistakes. But the Bible also says that all things are going to work to the good. As long as you don't keep doing the same stupid thing you're still doing. Hello. You're not going to allow things to work to the good if you're still doing the same thing. If you're still listening to the voice of the stranger, if you're still doing the same things, touching and agreeing with things that are not of God, you're going to still do the same thing and you're not going to change. See, God has given us the power to change, but it first takes the power of choice. You must choose. Everyone say, I must choose. And I have the power to choose. See, there are words that penetrate and words that don't. And there's an area you and I must focus, especially in your prayer time. Focused prayer is penetrating. Everyone say it with me. Focused prayer is penetrating. Unfocused prayer is not penetrating. Words that penetrate, Psalm 43. <laughs> Isn't it fun to worship? I'm telling you what. Praise God. Psalm 43 and verse 1. 1 through 4, let's speak it together. What's the first word? Vindicate. And what's he saying? Vindicate me, free me, and punish my enemy. Does everybody get it? When you want vindication, you want to be freed, and you want your enemy punished. That's vindication. He said, vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Or why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, send out your what? Your light and your truth. Everyone say light and truth. And he says something powerful. He says, let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. In other words, the light and truth that is spoken is going to bring you to the presence of God. Does everybody get it? It can't be thought. It must be spoken. People still trying to fight in their minds. You will lose. Then I will go to the altar of God and to my God with exceedingly joy. On the harp, I will praise you, O oh my God, my God. Again, vindicate me. Free me and punish my enemies. Send your light and your truth. Let them lead me to your tabernacle as I speak it into your presence. Is everybody okay? Psalm 119. Words that penetrate. Hallelujah. Words that penetrate.
Psalm 119, verse 20, uh, 97. <laughs> Number 22. No. <laughs> Psalm 119, verse uh, 97. Height. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Oh, how I love your law. What's his law? His words. Amen. <laughs> oh, how I love your words. I love your law. It is my meditation all day. So if it's his meditation, meditation is associated with focus. I focus on your words all day. Why? So then when I speak them, they'll be penetrating. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than are my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. What does meditation mean? Focus. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. I restrain my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. I have not departed from your judgments, for you yourself have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste. In other words, he speaks his words because he knows that they are sweet to him. Again, he focuses on his words. When he releases them, they become words of penetration. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a what? Lamp to my feet and a light to my path when spoken. Amen? It's when spoken. Taste the word. It's a lamp to the feet. It's a light to the path. Why? Because it's going to always lead to his presence. Amen? I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your, ju your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Except I pray the what? Free will offerings of my, my mouth. My mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your word. Again, the words that are focused are sweet. They're his words, aren't they? Proverbs 18. Too many times words are released and just bounce off the walls. Proverbs 18. See, there's got to be a focus with understanding for a penetration. In other words, if you have a rifle, think about a, a, a sniper. Amen? He, he's got this powerful weapon. But without the focus, he's not effective. We should be Holy Ghost snipers. Amen? Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, verse 20. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his what? His mouth. Because what he eats is what he becomes. Because he what? Speaks it. So once he speaks it, he eats it, and he becomes it. From the produce of his lips, he shall be satisfied. Verse 21, death and life are in the power, the release of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Very, very powerful. Speaking and eating, those are words of light and truth. They're words of life or death. Either bringing death to yourself or life. Amen? It's released into the spiritual realm, especially when you're in battle. 
you're focusing, you're releasing the words that are penetrating. Amen? Now it's released into the spirit realm. For what? To attack. There's something that must be behind it. You must believe it. You must believe it. Amen? What are we doing? You're either defending life, promoting life, or defending death and promoting death. Depending on what you say. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. We want words that penetrate. And they, we want them to penetrate darkness, bringing light and truth to expose all other darknesses of entanglements of demonic forces. Isaiah 55. As a man thinks, so he is. I meditate. I focus on your words. And when I speak them, they become penetrating. Isaiah 55, verse 10. Hallelujah. I may be moving a little faster tonight because we want to go home and watch the devil get crushed. <laughs> I hope they strip search Biden's. You know, you don't know what's on them. Hallelujah. You know, they're very deceptive. Darkness is very deceptive. Wickedness. Isaiah 55, verse 10. Let's go there. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Now, here's something powerful to understand. It says, words from my mouth. So that means that you and I must be partakers of the divine nature for the mouth of God to be manifested. Amen? Or else they're just words. Second Peter chapter 1 will confirm that. Believe me, if you're in the flesh, those words ain't going nowhere. Well, I mean, you might fall and hit your feet, you know, cause you to stumble. <laughs> Did you ever hear some, what's that saying? Somebody trips over their own words or whatever it is? I don't Second Peter 1 verse 2. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge, in the knowledge and understanding of God Almighty and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has already given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, as long as you're in position, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly, I want to say exceedingly, great and precious promises of who he is. In his covenant, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This must be an understanding. It must become revelation. Partakers of his divine nature release the words that penetrate darkness. Why? Because now it's his mouth, 
not yours. There's a difference. Hebrews 4. What does he say? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. In other words, that's focused words. Hebrew. She brewed. I brewed. Bunch of he and she brews. Praise God. Verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to what? Is anybody here? <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Are we ready? Verse 11, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is what? Living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there's no creature... No human, no one, nothing hidden from his sight. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Hmm. You know, when you're struggling sometimes and you're battling this demon or demons, there's a point to where you got to turn them over to Jesus. Jesus, take it over. Jesus, take it over. Does everybody understand? Why? Because for some reason, there's a lack of partaking of divine nature. Then it's got to be turned over to Jesus. Remember when the disciples came back, and they came back, and they were like, oh, Lord, that, that, nothing happened. We tried to... Heal this one, dude. Jesus, all oh, your little faith. And he cast a demon out of the person. But that was out of the mouth of God. Does everybody understand that? See, they got misfocused. Even though the divine nature was right with them, they still got misfocused. They began to look at themselves and what they were doing instead of looking at him. There's a difference. Hallelujah. Colossians 2. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 2. Now, Jesus didn't have time to bring people through the process of deliverance. Hello? He just... Poof. It was over with. Hallelujah. When Jesus cursed a tree, it didn't take 30 years. It was instant. <laughs> For some of us, it's a process. Amen? It's a process. You know how many times people... Go through deliverance quicker without being found, no foundation. And what happens? The demons come back seven times worse. See, when God sets you on a course to do something, you better complete it. Amen? Because he won't back you if you don't. That soulish arena, carnal arena, prideful arena. The worst thing you can be is successful in the wrong assignment because it won't count for nothing. 
I remember when I was out using dope and stuff, we'd stay up all night and have all these promises. We're going to do this and do that. We didn't have two nickels of work to rub together because we used it all. And then neighbors, too. All of these foolish promises, what I'm going to do. I couldn't do nothing but dream. <laughs> False dreams. Why? Because if God ain't in it, we don't want it. And remember, it's always about God's time. Always God's time. If it ain't God's time, it ain't in it. Verse 1, Colossians 2, verse 1. Let's speak it together. For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you in those in Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh or in the physical, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That means there's a time when you got to dig deep. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words of enticement. For though I am absent in the physical, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order. Everyone say good order. That's called divine order. And the steadfastness of your faith in Christ, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Now, beware. Lest anyone cheat you through these philosophy and empty deceitful words according to the traditions of men and doctrines of demons, according to the basic principles of this world and religious spirits, and not according to the anointing of Christ's words. Does everybody get this? For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead, bodily, and then you are the complete, you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Does everybody see that? Deceptive and persuasive words. Deceptive and persuasive words with the enemies you're going to try to mislead you with. And let me tell you, sometimes he does, did you ever do something and next thing you know that voice is there going, poof, 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 poof. he doesn't let up on you. Now, you can turn around and fight it all day long, or you can say no in the name of Jesus. And just walk away from the voice. You walk away from the presence. But see, some people haven't learned that yet. They're not there yet. How many times people grab hold of that voice and go, yeah, what do you want me to do? Why? Because the anointing isn't there yet. Hallelujah. It's his promises that says we are complete in Christ. See, if you don't know who you are, the devil knows that too. Luke 10. That's why Jesus said, go out and disciple them. The purpose of discipling is to bring an individual to a seat and position to where they know who they are in Christ. And I believe that there's a lot of things that are lacking these days. And Luke, uh, what did I say, 10. Verse 18. Let's speak it. And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you what? Authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means what? Hurt you. Nevertheless, don't rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, 
but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. He's given you the power to speak. So you can't trample anything without the words of God. Amen? So he's given you the power to speak. To what? Overcome the power of darkness. Mark 16. Hallelujah. Mark 16. Glory, hallelujah. 1616. 16. And then not 16. Just 1616. 16. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. He who believes, he who follows, yes, and is baptized in the Holy Spirit will be saved or will have power. See, there's a lot of people that are saved in carnal. There's a lot of people that are saved and carnal. Amen? They're saved and carnal. They're not saved and born again. There's a difference. Because a born again is an area of place and position in the tabernacle. Oh, glory. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be what? condemned. Let me share something again. Even if you speak in tongues, you can still be carnal. Because it is a gift. Does everybody get it? I know a lot of people that are out there speaking in tongues. And they are carnals can be. And have a perverse mouth and everything else. They're carnal. They're saved and carnal. They ain't safe from themselves, that's for sure. In verse 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they were what? Cast out demons. It's time you cast out your own. And they will speak with new tongues. Why? Because the anointing. And they will take up serpents. Now, let me share this with you in this new tongues thing. It's not only praying in tongues, but you'll have a mouth of God. Does everybody get it? Why? Because you are a partaker of the divine nature. And they will speak in new tongues. That doesn't mean you're going to go to school and learn another language. Amen? This is divine. Not only is it the gift of the spirit of tongues, but it's a new mouth. It is the mouth of God. Why? Because you are now partakers of the divine nature. You no longer cuss. That's over with. It's amazing to me how many people, they get frustrated in the supposedly Christians and they start cussing and cursing and doing all kinds of stuff. You know why? Because they're saved and carnal. They haven't reached that position truly as a born again. Because that is a place in a tabernacle where there's a close relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I didn't say you might not think it, but you ain't doing it. In fact, it can only get so far. Because if it gets close enough, you're going to be saying it. But you can discern it. Glory. <laughs> and they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they will what? They will recover. Words that penetrate. It's the power in his name. Amen. Again, many saved and carnal, but not born of the Spirit. Matthew 9. Matthew 
Matthew 9, 27. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind man came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? In other words, you believe I'm able to free you. How about bring you sight? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were open, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. Why? Because they were carnal. But they were able to see. <laughs> Amen. So they were carnal seers. According to the faith level, that's your level of connection. See, when an individual is not in that level of connection, they fight. They don't fight. They just flight. Amen? But if you're a fighter, no matter what, you stand. You're steadfast. No matter what. Even if you get brought to one knee or two knees, you still fight to get back up and fight. But there's not enough people. Too many don't fight, and they flight. Why? Because they're saved carnal. They're saved and carnal. And their words are not penetrating because they're not partaking, partaking in the divine nature. Isaiah 10. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the what? Anointing oil or the anointing. Okay, so we've got an area where there must be a level of faith and there must be a level of anointing. Amen? I want to release words that are penetrating. Every word must be backed by the anointing. When it's backed by the anointing, because you're partakers of the divine nature, it becomes the mouth of God, and it will not return void. It will penetrate. As long as you are what? Focused. Focused in your words. Focused in your release. Amen? And you know, they're, they're, I want to call it earnest or sincere prayer. Earnest or sincere. And a lot of people will get, oh, Lord, bless me. Thanks for the food. And bless me again. Did you work for her today? Yeah. I work for her for the food I ate. Nice. 2 Corinthians 3. Some people fight over the food more than they do over the powers of darkness. Second Corinthians 3. Is everybody there? Anybody there? Verse 1. 2 Corinthians 3, 1. Do we begin to again to commend ourselves, or do we need as some other's epistles of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by who? All men. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. And we have such trust through Christ toward God that not that our 
we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. We are living epistles. Amen. That's the living word. You know, again, if you don't know who you are, the enemy knows it. Why? Because he knows exactly what you think. That's why he tries to put words and stuff in there so that you agree with it. I'm going to close at 1 John 4. Just believe. Sometimes it needs to be just that simple. Just believe. Don't try to figure it all out. <laughs> Amen. Just believe. Step into the presence of God. Speak it. Speak it until you eat it, until you become it. Sometimes you got to speak it in to partake of the divine nature. You must begin to manifest the divine nature to grab hold of. How? Why you speak it. That's why if you ever notice that sometimes in the beginning of worship, as you get continue worship and worship, you press more and more in, you're changing. Things are happening. But don't focus on anything else but him. Just keep saying the words. Keep singing those words. And you know what will happen? Your mouth will change. And everybody will be blessed. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Let's speak it. Beloved, do not believe every demon or every spirit. Don't believe every voice, in other words. Amen? But test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. False doctrines. But this you know, the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. It says they are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God for God is in this, the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him, live through him, live through him. Amen? That means abide in him. Oh, glory. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God has so, so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. And by this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. His spirit. His spirit that wants to manifest not only the mouth of God, amen, but release Words that penetrate. Words that penetrate. Again, what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. As you continue to speak, you are manifesting. You are manifesting the divine nature of God, and you're able to partake of it. As you partake of it, you change. And now your mouth becomes the mouth of God. Amen? And now your words are penetrating. They're no longer just bouncing off walls. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word, your living word, your powerful word. And I pray tonight for each and every one 
that revelation will come, an impartation of the reality of who we are in you and who you are in us. And that we carry the words of life, partakers of the divine nature, living from the future, not from the past, but releasing the words that are life-giving and words that penetrate darkness and destroy their works, but rescue those who've been taken captive in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay blessed.